Okay. Well, good morning or good afternoon, rather. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, my uh, my hair is sticking up, but that's okay. Who cares? Ah. Uh, anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about the. Uh, there we go. We're going to talk about uh, the. Uh, uh, chapter uh, 18 and this won't take very long because you won't be tested on anything in this chapter but I will uh, also cover chapter 19 SM charts so so I'm gonna cover both things and let's see I think did I bring up the let's see I had it up but I guess I took it down um, yeah let's so let's look at the a syllabus real quickly so here it is and we'll go all the way down to the end here so today is the 29th Friday is the first so Friday would normally be SM charts but uh, we're gonna cover it today so we'll be all done with all the all the uh, the whole book we will have covered all 20 chapters um, because we covered 17 and 20 on Monday and uh, Today, 18, there will be nothing out of 18 that you'll be responsible for. I just want you to look at it. It does come up again in DSD, so it's kind of useful to look at it, but, but, but don't spend much time on it. And then, but SM charts, I do want you to know we will spend some time on this. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, so let me shrink myself down here. And then... Uh, and then I may just, maybe I'll put this over here. Yeah, perfect. All right, something like this. Okay, so then I'll come back to here. All right, so we're going to look at two circuits. We're going to look at a serial adder and a parallel multiplier. Uh, the idea of these is to show you how to take a sequential circuit and turn a what, what would be an iterative design into a sequential design. So rather than have, um, so we're going to look at a 4-bit adder, but instead of having four 1-bit adders daisy chained together, we're going to have one full adder that's going to add one bit of A, one bit of B, or I think in this case X and Y, and they're going to add them to add plus a one bit of carry in, and they're going to generate a sum and a carry out, depending on obviously what the inputs are. So the carry out will be saved in a one flip-flop and the sum will be saved in a shift register and the way this is going to work uh, here's the shift register for the X and here's the shift register for the Y here is the full adder I'll scoochie myself over here a little bit here's the full adder now what what the full adder does is uh, it's a combinational device so the full adder is, is, does not have a clock. And whenever you present input information, carry in Y and X, with a small propagation delay, it generates a sum and a carry out. Now, if you'll notice, the X is the, low, is the least significant bit in this shift register. The Y is the least significant bit in this shift register. The carry in is just the output of the, this D flip-flop. So these are the three input bits, and the two output bits, the carry out, which we'll, we'll call this carry CI, CI, this will be YI, XI, and CI. So initially, there'll be X0, Y0, and carry zero, which would be the original carry in, which should be zero. So we'll start off with a flip-flop set to zero. And then here we have a carry out, so that's gonna be carry one. And the sum will be sum zero. So the sum zero is gonna go around and get shifted into this shift register when the clock ticks. When the clock ticks, this Y zero is gonna go out and back in this end, and Y three, two, and one will move down so that now Y1 will be the low order bit, and up here, X1 will be the low order bit. X0 gets lost, but it's replaced at the upper end 
by some zero. So when we shift this register four times, we'll have down here, instead of x zero, we'll have some zero, some one, some two, and some three. All right, and the final carry out will be held in this shift register, I'm sorry, in this flip flop. Okay, now, so this is, this has, this, this adder has a, con, a controller. Now, one of the things I want you to notice about this, and again, I'm, I'm not going to test you on, on anything. I might ask you a question about this, though, so, so make note. When we do, when we design, do sequential designs, normally we want to separate our data path from our control path. And so this is a great example of, of that. Here is the control path over here. We have, a, we have some control hardware. And here's our data over here, our X value, our Y value, our carry in, uh, and then when it's all done, our sum and our carry out. So the data is over here and the control stuff's over here. So the control includes, in this case, a start signal and a shift command, and also the clock. The clock sort of external to this control circuit. Every time the clock ticks, we're, we're, we're going to shift once, and, and that shift is going to involve shifting in the sum from, from this first edition. It's going to involve uh, shifting the, taking the D input, which would be the carry out, and clocking that into the flip-flop. So then the new carry out, the, sorry, the new carry in, so CI plus one, will be this that comes out, CI plus one. And the next time it'll be CI plus two and CI plus three and so forth. Well, I will increase. So it'll always be CI plus one. But the first time I is zero, then I is one, then I is two, then I is three. The final carry out then would be uh, three plus one or C four. And so, all right. So let's see how this works. So we're, we're gonna load this up with values. We're gonna load it up with one, zero, one, zero, and zero, zero, one, one. All right, now, so if I write this down, okay, so, uh, I'll slide this down here a little bit. Sorry, okay, if I write this down, so, so we have, so yeah, this is good. All right, so we have uh, one, zero, one, zero, and that's, that's uh, X. And we have uh, zero, zero, one, one equals Y. And our carry in is zero, our original carry in. When we add this up, we'll get one, one one zero one so that should be the sum and a carry out equals zero okay so that's what we got going now let's uh let's see how this works the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add this zero and this one and this carry in are going to go into the adder and out of it's going to come a sum and a carry out the carry out carry out is going to go into this flip-flop down here into the D input and and then when the clock ticks it's going to shift these values and it's going to save this carry out all right so when this happens the first time then so right now the zero is being presented the ones being presented and the zero so what's the sum? The sum is one, the carry out is zero. All right, now we tick the clock. This, that one that came out of here, the first sum is now here, that is sum zero. We shifted all the values down. So we had one, zero, one, zero. Now we have one, zero, one, plus the carry, uh, the shifted in sum zero. The Y just gets shifted around. So where the Y was 0, 0, 1, 1, now it's 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is, this is, this is no longer Y0, this is Y1, this is X1. And, and since our carry out was 0, that's what's in the flip-flop. So we present a 0, a 1, and a 1. 
that, that gives us a sum of 0 and a carry out of 1. So the 1 is presented to the D input. So when the next clock hits, boom, the 0 shift down, the 1 shifts in here. Now we have a 1 presented to the adder. We have two zeros, and uh, our second, our sum 1, is been, which was a 0, is loaded in here. And the carry out is here in the flip-flop and being presented here as, as a 1 now. All right, so the first two bits of the sum are 1 and 0. Now we have x2 and y2, both zeros, and uh, so, but our carry in is a 1, so we're going to generate a sum of 1 and a carry out of 0. So when the clock ticks, this 1's going up here, this is all shifting down, this 0 is being thrown away, this is just circulating. So now it's going to go to 0, 1, 1, 0, and this 0 is going to be latched in. All right, 0 latched in, 0, 1, 1, 0, and uh, the 1 from there gets put in. Now we have x is 1. Now this is x2. We only have, uh, I believe that's x2, right? Yeah, so, so, so the first one, now that's x1, x2. Sorry, this is x3. So now we're on x3. This is x3. That's y3. So we're presenting a 1 and a 0. The carry in is a 0. And our carry out is for a sum is a 1, and the carry out is a 0. And when we tick it, now this 1 gets staved up, saved up here, and we're done. Now notice 1101, that is uh, what we predicted here, 1101. And, um, and notice the final carry out is down here, it's a 0. And this is our sum up here, 1101. And notice our y circulated all the way around and it's back to where it was, 0011. Now let's see if that made sense, okay? So uh, we started with, uh, this would be A, or 10, plus 3. So 13 is what we're looking for. Okay, let's see if we get 13. So uh, 1101, that is, uh, that is D, or 13 and our carry out is a zero. So 13 is the answer. So it looks like it works. All right, now, oops, I did it the wrong side. So we'll flip it over here. Okay, so what, what you see there then is uh, with one flip-flop, two shift registers, and a, and a full ladder, we can, we can, we can shift the bits into the adder, save the result, and after four shifts, we have our sum. Now, this is very, very inefficient. We would never build an adder like this. But, um, but it, it just serves to illustrate how you can do this. It, a much more complicated process uh, could possibly, uh, might lend itself to exactly doing this. But anyway, all right, there we are. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, go back, shrink this down, and move it over. All right, now let's look at the controller here. We want to look at the controller. So what the controller has to do to make this work, it has to wait for a start signal, and then it has to issue the, sh it has to issue, and, and it, obviously it has to, have a clock that's slow enough that our adder will, will get, that all that all the propagation delays are fully run before the next clock hits. As long as that's the case, and it, and again, a full adder should could easily have a propagation delay of, you know, of a handful of nanoseconds, so maybe ten or less. So uh, so the clock can run pretty fast here. All right. So what does the controller have to do? Well, so if we look at the hardware of the controller. Let's see, I don't know if I did this. Okay, yeah. So, so here, here's the, here's we start in S zero. As long as we don't have a start signal, we'll call it start prime. So not start. We output a zero for our uh, shift command, and we'll just stay here. When we finally start is asserted, then we'll have start, and our output will be shift. We'll go to one, and now with any without any additional inputs, we're going to issue three more shifts. Shift, 
shift, shift. And we get back to S0. If we had another start signal, then we would just go around again. But until we do, we just stay here. So this is a very simple controller. And you can see this, this, but this is how, this is the system that would control this adder. So again, you separate the control path over here, where we have our control hardware, from the data over here. That, that part I want you, I do want you to remember. Uh, but I'm not going to ask you specific questions about the, the adder, or for that matter, the next circuit, which is the multiplier. All right, so this is a simple thing to design. We have a state table here, S0, S1, S2, S3. It's very simple. From S1, no matter what, you go to 2. From 2, no matter what, you go to 3. From 3, no matter what, you go to S0. And our shift command uh, doesn't depend on start. It's always a 1, except at the very beginning. All right, so pretty simple. And then we substitute in flip-flop state assignment. There's our transition table. And we do our K-maps. And so our controller could look something like this. DA would be this, DB would be this, and our shift commander would just be driven by start plus A, start R, A, R, B. Okay, parallel multiplier. Let's look at this. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want you to, to kind of get the idea. One of the problems with this example in the book is it's missing some, some key hardware. Uh, and because it that key hardware is very complicated, they just leave it out which is fine but it's a problem okay so let me explain how this explain how this works the idea is we're going to multiply uh, a four bit uh, multiple can down here being presented to this four bit adder to a four bit multiplier which is loaded in here in bits zero one two and three of this uh, nine bit shift register the upper bits will start off empty or zeroed out, there'll be zeros. And then we have our controlling hardware over here, and we have our clock. Notice there's a path coming from this bin right here all the way back to the controller. So the controller needs to know what the what that last multiplier bit is. And the reason it needs to know that, we're gonna we're gonna shift this multiplier down. So this is the low order multiplier bit, and we have four bits. And here's the multiple can. If the multiplier bit is a zero, all we do is shift we don't add but if it's a one then we add and then shift and that's the same thing you do when you do multiplication in binary remember if you have a one then you copy the you, you copy the uh, multiple can and if you have a zero you don't copy the multiple can you copy zeros and in either case you shift one bit over and do it again okay in this case we're going to shift the multiplier bits and and we're going to load the results here, the four bits of the four bit adder plus the carry out. Carry out goes into bit eight here, and the four bits go in. But what's tricky, and this is the part that's a little confusing, these bits seven, six, five, and four are 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 say the A, the B is the multiple can, and we're gonna add A to B, and then we're gonna store the result, we're gonna overwrite the original contents of seven, six, five, four and write, write the new contents in, which will be the sum of the old contents plus uh, the multiple can. And then we're only going to do the add, though, if this, if this low order bit is a 1. Otherwise, we're just shifting. OK, the controller, again, we separate the data path over here from the controller. And the controller takes in the multiplier bit, either a 1 or a 0. If it's a 0, we're not going to add. We're only going to shift a start bit and it puts out uh, and also the clock I guess you could say it puts out the done signal and the the control some of the con some of the other things there's a there's a load here where we load the multiplier into the lower four digits and clear the upper digits we don't really show how the multiple can gets loaded but presumably at the same time we issue load the multiple can gets loaded in some kind of register here that, whose output is connected to the adder and then uh, the one command is add, which means basically that the sum will be loaded into 7654. The sum of the multiple can and the original contents of 7654. That will happen on add. On shift, 
we're going to shift this whole register down one bit and we're going to shift uh, and, and we're not going to shift the multiple we're not going to shift the multiple cam it's it's going to stay and then we'll do it again and we we we're either going to add and shift or or just shift a total of four times so that's how this works uh, I did I, I put some numbers in I don't know I don't think I'm going to go through them anyway maybe I'll go through the first two okay so we're going to start we're going to multiply nine by five okay and we're going to come up with a result that should fit into nine bits here all right well the way that the idea here is that we look at this one since it's a one we're going to add and then shift so the first thing we're going to add is one zero zero one these are all zeros so that's just going to store one zero zero one here there's no carry out so that'll be a zero and now we're going to shift so we shift this down this one zero zero one down and now it's like this and we shift again and because then uh this this new bit in the multiplier is a zero we're just going to shift we don't add now it's a one so we're going to first we're going to add and we're going to add the numbers here to the numbers here and then store all, it all back in here and hopefully it'll all make sense all right well i'm gonna the the controller looks something like this we start we start up here we wait for a start signal so we stay here until we get a start signal once we get a start signal then we issue the start command and the load command and then we get to s1 at s1 we look at that multiplier bit if it's one we add and shift if it's if it's m prime which is zero then it's just shift we do the same thing here add and shift or just shift add and shift or just shift add and shift and we're done we should have done bit and that causes the, uh, the the state machine to stop in state zero and stay here until the start command is issued again and that's it so that's about all I really wanted you to see notice that our controller has all these steps but they really boil down to repeating either add and shift or shift add and shift or shift add and shift or shift add and shift so we really can do a counter and we can just have these blocks implemented and we can count so we introduce this counter k and when k counts to four then we're done so uh so we add this little counter and anyway when it gets to four we're done so I'm again not going to spend more time on this. I'm not going to any ask ask you any questions about either the adder or the multiplier, but I do want you to remember the concept of um, data path that we do try and separate that we try and separate the uh, the data path from the control path. And all right, so um, okay, that's that's pretty much it. All right, now. Let me uh, shift to state machine. I'm going to at least introduce SM charts, and then we'll talk about them some more on Friday, and I'll also uh, start reviewing just test. I'll review just test on Friday, just test on Monday, and I'll have another. I'll have a help session at least on Monday for sure, and maybe another one. Maybe I'll do another one on Friday. Okay. So let me um, let me get rid of this. Okay, and then. Um, then uh, I may leave this in place, but let me pull up the other, the other, um, yeah, 19. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we're going to talk about SM charts. SM charts, it's another name for sequential circuit. Uh, it's, an, it, it's essentially very similar to a state graph, but it, it, it's, it's a state machine chart, okay? So just like a state graph, we, we, have, a, we have blocks for all our states. And um, the nice thing, though, is we can also use the, uh, the SM chart directly to write the equations that we're interested in getting. We don't have to go through k-maps or anything. And that, this is really a powerful feature. It's, it's very nice and convenient. So let's see how this works. These are a little easier to understand than state graphs, I think, although since you kind of see state graphs first, it's presented backwards, maybe. Uh, and it can be converted into several forms. It, it very much resembles a flowchart, and it does follow some strict rules, unlike a state graph that kind of has looser rules. 
This one is a little more um, uh, proscribed. Um, there are three components, and really only three components, okay? So every state, every SM chart is made up of some number of blocks, one block per state. And within that block, you have to have one and only one state box. You can also have decision boxes or none, and you can also have conditional output boxes or none of them. There has to only be one entrance path into the block, and it should go into the state box directly. There can be a number of exit paths. A path through the block is called a link path, and more than one link path can be active at a time as long as the, the, the link paths that are active all exit the same point. So if you have several different exit points, then you, you can't have those active at the same time. But you can have paths through the block active at the same time, and I'll explain that in a minute. That's, a, that's the only confusing concept about this. All right, so here's, so, here's a, so here's our state box. Usually we put the state name in here, like S0, S1, S2. And then we, if there are more outputs, we put the more outputs in here. And then we, if we're going to, when we uh, do the flip-flop encoding, we put the code for this state in terms of, say, flip-flops here. It's sort of suggesting there are three flip-flops, A, B, C, or X, Y, Z, or whatever. We would put those here. So that would be A, A prime, B prime, C prime, say, if this was uh, binary order and this was state S0. And, and you have the one path in, but you can have multiple paths out. Then we have a decision box, and uh, the paths can come out the, either side or the bottom, but we only have two paths out. One path if the condition is true. So normally in the condition, we just write X, because that would be our input, say. We just have one input. So this would be X, and one over here, if X equals one, we come out this way. If X equals zero, we come out that way. And then... On, on our links, we can have these conditional output boxes. And the conditional output is, is very much a mealy output. The output list here in the state box is a more output. The output on the links is a more is a mealy output. And a link may or may not have an output. And normally, we only put the output there if it's a 1. So if it's a 0, so if it's not stated to be a 1, it's assumed to be 0. Same thing here on our uh, state box. So if we if z were a one, we'd just put z, which means it's a one. Or if, or if we were doing it as a melee and not associated with the state, then we would just put a z there. Or maybe we have two outputs, uh, w and z, or something like that. So w would be associated with the state, but say z would be associated with this conditional output. Only if this is an active link path does this output turn on. And again, uh, if there's no output, if, if, you're, if, if the letter's not there, then we assume it to be zero. All right. So here's an example of a single state box. Block, I should say. A st single state block. It has a state box here. It has a decision box there and here and here. And it has a conditional output box here and here. This conditional output box has two outputs in it, Z3 and Z4. This one has only Z5, and notice we have two more outputs, Z1 and Z2. So Z1 and Z2 are more outputs. Z3, 4, and 5 are melee outputs. And although whenever you're in state S1, you're always outputting Z1 or Z2, Z1 and Z2, but you're only outputting Z3, Z4 if you're x1 so we have three input three inputs x1 x2 and x3 if x1 is a zero then you're going to output z3 z3 z4 also if your if your next x in, next x in and x1 input is a one then you would out then and your x3 is a zero then you would output z5 and then if your next x is a zero and x2 is a zero you go out exit one 
if it's if it's x1 is 0 x2 is 1 regardless of x3 you go out 2 if x1 is a 1 and x3 is a 0 you go out x3 and if x1 is a 1 and x3 is a 1 then you go out whatever this is over here uh, output n all right and you have some n exit paths remember only one exit path can be active at any given time but you you could have um, you could have two link paths active if they exited at the same place. In this case, they don't. None of them do. All right. So let's let's look at an example. It's probably easier. Uh, I'll come back to this in a minute. Let's look at this example. Here we have a state graph. Three states: S0, S1, S2. Notice the more output associated with each of these, ZA, ZB, and ZC are our more outputs. Notice though that we have uh, a Z out, we have a melee output Z1 associated with this link and a melee output Z2 associated with this link. So everywhere else, only Z2 is only one when you take this path. Z1 is only one when you take this path. But whenever you're in state S0, your ZA is a one. Whenever you're in state S1, your ZB is a one. Whenever you're in state S2, your ZC is a two, is a one. And obviously, ZB and ZA would be zeros. Here, ZA and ZC would be zeros, and here, ZB and C would be zeros. Just ZA would be one. All right, so if you're in state zero and you get a zero, you stay here. If you get a one, you go here. Here, if you get a zero, you go back to S0. If you get a one, you go to S2. In S2, if you get a one, you stay here and output Z2. And if, as long as you're in this state, you're outputting Z, ZC. And then when you get a zero, you output Z1 and you're going back to uh, S0, where you would be outputting ZA. Here you would always be outputting ZB, here ZC. And here on the link path, you would also, Z1 would be a one. And if you got a, here you got a one, ZC, Z2 would be a one. All right, let's translate that into an SM chart. We have three state blocks, the one colored in purple, then in red, and then in yellow. And so this is a state box. This is or this. I'm sorry. This is a block. This is a block, and this is a block. This block has just a state box and a decision box. So does this one. This one has a state box, a decision box, and two conditional output boxes. And so the conditional output boxes are mealy outputs. The ones associated with the state boxes are mores, just like up here. The A's, the Z A, Z B, and Z C are mores. The Z1 and the Z2 associated with this link and with this link are melees. And so this follows the same exact way. You're in state S0. The next input X comes in. It's a 1. You go to S1. Just like here. A 1, you go to S1. You get another 1, you go to S2. Just like there. Now if you, now you have to choose. Uh, based on the next x, whether you, whether z1 is going to be 1 or z2 is going to be 1. But both won't be at the same time. All right, so how does this help us? Well, so I'll show you this in a minute. I think I'm not going to go through this. Uh, I'm going to skip past this. So, so let me show you how it, how it helps us. Um, we, can, we can directly realize our, our state equations right off the SM chart. And first, we have to assign all the state boxes their flip-flop encoding scheme. So uh, if we have, say in this case, uh, where we have, uh, we have three states, so we need at least two flip-flops. So we would assign each one of these state boxes a coding. This, if we did it straight binary, this would be 0, 0. This would be for A and B flip-flops. This would be 0, 1. This would be 1, 0 or 1, 1, uh, depending on whether you if you do straight binary, it'd be zero one, uh, it'd be one zero, and and if you tried to flip it a little bit, then yeah, then it, you, you could do, you could make it one one if you wanted, uh, and follow the the it doesn't really matter in this case. Okay, so we do that, so uh, so we assign the flip flop encoding, then to if we want to generate the uh, if we want to generate uh, our a, say we have two flip-flops, if we want to generate the, the DA input, then 
we identify all states in which the uh, well this is Q they're doing Q's um, and not and not A's or B's but anyway we, we find all the states where say the A flip-flop is a one or Q1 is a one or whatever and then we find anywhere that's true we we write down the code for all the link paths into that state and uh, and and that basically then uh, we just or all those together and that gives us our equation uh, we'll, we'll show you this here's a here's a good example okay so uh, here we have three states uh, I think yeah three s0 s1 and s2 so we've assigned our flip-flop coding 0 0 0 1 and 1 1 notice this is a and this is B okay so so the first thing we want to do and I'm gonna bring up this a little bit uh, let me shine it, shoot it over a little bit okay yeah it should work good Let's flip it around. now notice here so we have we have a coding so we have a coding for a 0 0 so this is 0 so let's say we want to find our D a input okay so what states is a coded as a 1 well it's a 0 here so not s 0 it's a 0 here so not s 1 just here this is the only place so we now all we have to do for our DA input is we have to we have to basically represent all paths into this uh, this state block this state box here okay well how many paths come in a path comes in from s1 right here and a path comes in from s2 itself out the bottom and around and back in okay so let's account for those two paths so the first path that comes in from s1 so first off so we're, we're trying to write the d a input okay so we we just we only have to look at the state blocks where the a the value for the a flip-flop is a one where it's a zero we don't have we can ignore that so where is it a one just in state s2 so now all we have to do is or together all the paths coming in to state s2 well we we already figured out there's a path coming in from s1 and a path that comes in from s2 itself re-enters uh, back at the top okay so let's write the path for s1 well how do we describe s1 well s1 is described as a prime b so whenever we write a prime b when a is 0 and b is 1 we're in state s1 when the flip-flop a is at 0 and the flip-flop b is at 1 we're in state s1 all right so that's just a prime b but we only go to state s2 if our new x is a 1 so that would be a b x and now we have to or to that the other path this path comes from s2 itself and it comes to from s2 when x is 1 out here curves around and back in okay so that is just going to be a b because that's the code for state s2 and then x is a 1 so it's a b x and of course we can simplify this to just b x okay so that is the flip-flop a equate the da equation let's do db now the interesting thing here is that uh, b is a 1 here so we can just copy what we just did for a because it's the same so so I already know I can just take my bx and put it down here plus I have one other place where I have to account for a b is 1 here uh, flip-flop B is a 1 in S1 and what do I have coming into S1 well I have a link from state S0 when X is 1 so in that case I just have to write that term so what how do I code state S0 it's just a prime B prime because it's represented by the flip-flops being 0 0 and when X is a 1 or X we go into S1 so I just need a prime B prime X and so there's my solution now I could write all this out maybe I could simplify it some more uh, yeah I guess I could 
So if I let bx be expanded into a prime bx and a bx, I could use this term and we could drop we could uh, drop the b prime and so we could have bx plus a prime x. Okay, that's that's so I could simplify it to that and that. Those are my two flip-flop inputs. And what about what about my outputs? Well, I have a bunch of outputs. I have ZA, ZB, ZC, Z1, and Z2. I have to write equations for all those outputs. So what is the equation for ZA? Well, ZA is super simple because whenever I'm in state S0, I'm outputting ZA equals 1. So that would just be A prime, B prime. Because A is 0, B is 0, that means I'm in state S0. And ZB is equally easy. That's just going to be A prime B. And ZC, equally easy, AB. What about Z1 and Z2? Well, Z1 happens when I'm in state S2, so that's AB, and my X is 0, so that's X prime. And Z2 happens when I'm in state S2, that's AB, and my X is 1, that's just X. So that is it. That's my entire uh, circuit for this. That's my entire set of hardware to implement this, 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 uh, this, this state machine. Of course, I have two flip-flops, A and B. So I have those, two, those three gates for the A input. Maybe I'll draw the circuit down here. So I have a flip-flop A and a flip-flop B. We'll get it all on here. So this is A, and this is B. So my, my D input here is just going to be A prime BX plus AB. Uh, it's just going to be BX. Sorry, my bad. So BX, so that's an AND gate with B and X going in. The B input is going to be BX plus A prime X. So I need a little OR gate here, and I need two AND gates. Well, I just need, actually, I can share this term. And then I can just go down here and put in a prime x. And then for my outputs, that's really easy. Uh, this is just going to be one AND gate, one AND gate, one AND gate, one AND gate, and one AND gate. So they're all three AND gates. I could just draw them here. Like that. Those are my three Z's. So you can see, bam, I didn't do K maps. I didn't do transition table. I didn't do a state table. I didn't do anything. All I did was use my state machine chart. Okay, we'll work some more on this on Friday. Um, I think that's a, that's a pretty good start. Uh, and we're right at 43, 44 minutes. So I think I'm gonna stop with that. Um, there's a few more things to say about it, but, but I, that hopefully gives you the concept and you can start looking at the problems maybe and thinking, uh, thinking about the, the problems. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, I'm going to send out an email with all the due dates, uh, kind of summarizing the end of the course. I'll do that hopefully, hopefully today, if not first thing tomorrow. Uh, and... Uh, We'll have another help session probably on Friday, and I'll send out a link to that uh, probably sometime Friday. I already have a noon and a nine, so it'll probably be it may be like uh, six p.m. or seven p.m. or something like that, or maybe five p.m. All right, so that should do it. Uh, I I don't think I'll put up a quiz today. Um, maybe I'll put up a one question quiz, a really simple thing, and so you can just do that real quickly. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll do the standard four question quiz. Yeah, I'll do that. But it'll be easy. So, all right. So that's the end of it. We will uh, we will then um, see you uh, on a help session uh, Friday, and also I'll do another lecture Friday where I'll finish up talking about SM charts, and then I'll start working problems um, for the test, and I'll do that on I'll do that on Monday. And I'll probably also do it on Tuesday, but I may 
post the lecture, uh, sorry, Wednesday, but that's when the test is. So I'll probably post that lecture early in the day so you can review that lecture before you take the test if you want. Or I suppose you can review it while you're taking the test. All right. So uh, with that, we'll talk to you later.